On November 24, 2009, John Edward Jones and his brother Josh, along with 11 others, decided it would be a fun, pre-Thanksgiving activity to go caving in Nutty Putty Cave. After a majority of the party had finished exploring the big slide, John, Josh, and two friends decided to go find more of a challenge, and a challenge sure ensued. Hello everybody, my name is Herdy McSmarty, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the tragic death of John Edward Jones and how he lost his life exploring the Nutty Putty Cave. The sources that made this video possible are linked in the description, and viewer discretion is advised if tragic deaths of this sort, as well as claustrophobia, make you uncomfortable or squeamish. I'll say right now that in hearing this case and watching documentaries, as well as the film The Last Ascent, this stuff shakes me to my core, man. Um, but it's important to question why. Why people do these things, and most of all, how can we prevent it? Without further ado, let's begin. Nutty Putty Cave is located west of Utah Lake in Utah County in the state of Utah. A cave that is named for the texture of its inner walls, Nutty Putty is a very wet clay cave with many small, tight, narrow passages with a depth of 145 feet below the surface. In 2006, the cave had been closed due to large interests and visitors. As it was a concern that a fatality could occur after the cave had begun smoothing out, it was temporarily closed until 2009. Over the years, there have been many rescues that have taken place in Nutty Putty because caving in a cave with small passages can get many of those stuck. As well, many visitors would enter unprepared or inexperienced. John and his brother Josh, however, were not among these visitors. Their father took them caving as a kid, and it had been long since they went, so certain skills were present, just possibly rusty. John, Josh, and the two men split up from the group mentioned earlier to find the birth canal. However, while searching for the right passage through the birth canal, John found himself misdirected when he crawled down an entrance to an area known as the corkscrew. Without sight of the large expected opening, John made a downturn into a smaller hole. To John's unfortunate surprise, this hole had become a dead end and he was now stuck in a crawl space at a 70 degree angle and was not able to move out of this space. The crevice he was trapped in measured 10 by 18 inches, which to reference is the size of a washer door. However, he had lodged himself in a smaller portion of the hole that was tighter on his legs. Unable to free himself, he had to alert his brother Josh. Josh attempted to pull John out, however, in doing so, John would slide back into the original position. With one hand trapped under him and the other forced backwards, it was clear that John wasn't going anywhere. After a quick prayer, Josh headed to the surface to alert the area that they were in trouble and needed help as soon as possible. The first volunteer to arrive on scene was a woman named Susie, a small, nimble woman who would be able to navigate Nutty Putty much easier due to her short size. When Susie was unable to get John out, she went to lengths such as cutting off his pants in order to secure some rope. The rescue team of dozens had to find a new way to get John out before he succumbed to his injuries. The human body is not built to be upside down for extended periods of time. Often, when a human is stuck in a position like this, it can be fatal due to the pressure of their organs on one another and the fact that their heart doesn't function and pump blood as well when upside down, which was proving to be an immediate concern. The team discussed ways to get John out, from breaking his legs to ordering gallons of peanut oil to lubricate the walls and hope he would just slip out. It was proving difficult to get John out because his legs would constantly hit the ceiling of the crawl space, stopping him from being able to be pulled out fully. And we know that the human body just can't bend in this way. Nutty Putty's extremely narrow walls were proving to be a pain for the rescuers. However, it was decided that a system of pulleys would be drilled into the wall and John would be pulled out via pulley system. I want to recall the texture of the cave's walls, clay-like and wet. Please keep this in mind. At this point, John was doing much worse. While waiting for the pulleys to all be installed, he had begun to phase between stages of calm and severe panic. He would frantically try to delodge himself and would only make his heart rate increase and his lungs work harder to keep him alive. While waiting, a cable system was set up so that John could talk to his wife on the surface, who assured him to be strong and work on getting out. John has now been trapped almost completely upside down for 19 hours, still waiting for the rescue team to attempt to pull him out. At last, it was time to try and pull John out of the crevice of Nutty Putty Cave. The rescuers worked in a formation of eight men to pull the rope that would pull John out with the pulleys. Frequently, the crew had to stop and wait because each tug caused severe pain to John. With each pull, more of John could be seen from the hole until he was eventually able to make eye contact with one of the rescuers. John was described as tired looking with red eyes, dirt on his face, but otherwise he appeared fine. 
After a quick rest, the team continued to pull as John was starting to make his way out. John's wife also coached him along during the breaks. As John had grown extremely tired, she told him to take a rest because he had been working so hard. She reassured him that after the rest, he could try again soon. This is noted as the final conversation John and his wife Emily had. As the team tried to pull John up a fourth time, the rope that was held suddenly lost tension. The rescuer who had sat alongside John had been knocked unconscious by a keyhole near his legs. The stone arc that the rope hoisting John up had wrapped around had shattered. Dust covered his vision and he had been knocked unconscious for a short amount of time. He woke up to then realize that John had fallen back down into the spot he first became stuck in, but deeper than before, and he now was not responding to any contact. Still shallowly breathing, another rescuer took the place of the previous to try to wrap a rope around John. However, he had gotten himself stuck for around 15 minutes and then drilled a hole for a new pulley. After this, a new rescuer went down and was unable to make any contact with John. A medical professional was sent down to try and find a pulse and pronounced John Edward Jones dead at midnight on November 25th. He died at the age of 26. A total of 137 brave rescuers spent a long, draining, and unsuccessful 27 hours trying to free John from Nutty Putty Cave. It was deemed by authorities that it would be too difficult to recover John's body, and he was left to rest in the caves. Since, the Nutty Putty Cave has been sealed and cemented in the hopes that nobody else would ever enter the cave and be trapped as John had. This accident is a whole lot to unpack. It baffles me that humans can do such simple tasks and manage to get themselves in so much trouble. In the case of John Jones, I would say he crawled into his grave. Caving and splunking can be quite different. It seems John was splunking rather than caving for biological research, as this endeavor appears to be recreational. Splunking is viewed as a hobby or pastime for exercise, exploration, and sometimes risk. However, in Joan's case, many mistakes were made that led to his death. John went in with a vintage headlamp and a lack of proper splunking gear. It's recommended that splunkers take coveralls, helmet-mounted lights, heavy boots, and gloves. While John wasn't wearing coveralls or heavy boots, it may have been harder to get him out in that case if he had been wearing them. As well, I don't know how to feel about the men choosing to split up. Another known mistake John made was going headfirst into this space, as well as upside down. Taking a peek down or an around where you're crawling is extremely dangerous when caving. In John's particular spot that is speculated to be near Ed's push, this is also a very speculated fact about where exactly he was, he had squeezed his chest in and forced air out of his chest so that he could get through a fissure to what he hoped was the other side. And in doing this, it would have been harder to get him out as well. His feet were also hitting the roof of the crawl space. Um, I went looking on Reddit for thoughts about all this. This form comes from r slash morbid podcast. They recently released a diagram of where John would have been in Nutty Putty Cave. There is actually a whole YouTube video that this clip is from where it walks you through exactly what the tunnel looked like and yeah, he was too big to have gotten himself back out. There was actually a long narrow tunnel that had a smart, sharp V shape right before the area where he got stuck, where his brother and rescue workers were able to fit. But there was no way he was going to make it out. In the video, I believe it says that the rescue workers that went in were like 5'3", and this man was 6 foot and 200 pounds. If he had gone feet first, it might have been different, but since he had went in head first, that was kind of like the nail in the coffin, to my understanding. It was literally like everything that could possibly go wrong, went wrong. I just can't imagine such a horrible way to die and that he was so young too. I hope his wife and child never have hardships in their lives because oh my god. They deserve all the love and all the good things to have to survive with a traumatic loss like this. It was a mistake to go head first like this, especially when you don't know what's in front of you. He thought he was in a different part of the cave and was going to come out into a larger area like hundreds if not thousands others have done. Yes, that's the saddest part. A mistake he didn't even realize he was making that cost him everything. When you see the diagram, it literally turns your stomach. It's a shame they couldn't get a medical profession down there to knock him out with some morphine until the inevitable happened. I always thought that if you can get in, you can get out. Just breathe, relax, and make slow movements. Not this time, and that terrifies me to a whole other level. Now there's lots of speculation about John being freed, or almost freed. One of the rescuers told news outlets at the scene that John had been saved and was on his way out, when it seems that seconds later the pulley system had failed. However, it was told later that it would have taken them hours to get John out of the cave. 
and that the first initial tugs had him hours away from any freedom. They were just out of time. I will agree that the worst part about this case is the death. That multiple small mistakes leads you trapped forever. I'm kind of grateful to be talking about this today in the hopes that it doesn't freak me out anymore, but it still does. <laughs> it still will. The fact that this death is so bizarre, and frankly wasn't a way we considered humans to go, is so messed up. I do believe that it is possible that if John went in backwards, he would have been able to free himself, or at least attempt to help push to the pull of the ropes and rescuers. But unfortunately, that is the story and fate of John Edward Jones. His death and horrible situation serves the question of why do we do things, especially unprepared. For those who may be Splunkers, I would love to hear your reasons for why in the comments down below, along with any other forms of discussion or thoughts from anyone else. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys all in the next one.